external challenges, just look at these figures. We are an air hub, we get about 45,000 jobs. C hub, we get 150,000 jobs. Finance, 166,000. Energy, 50,000. Just broad numbers. Look at Bangkok, look at Singapore. Which do you think is a natural air hub? Obvious, isn't it? In 2006, Thaksin Sinawatra, then the Prime Minister, built this huge airport. Some airlines moved from Singapore. It's very easy. Land is much cheaper. Operating costs are much less expensive. It's more central. But, you know, unfortunately for Thailand, I, there was a coup, political instability. The new government didn't see the airport as a major project, and we survived. But these things can go. There's nothing written in stone about us being an air hub. 45,000 jobs. Next, C, 150,000 jobs, right? China is now building a port in Kiap Piu in Myanmar. They are building another one last week you would have seen in Guada. They are building a railroad straight into Kunming and from Guada into China. The idea is to avoid Straits of Malacca. If you are a strategist, military strategist, you don't want your lifeline to go through the Straits of Malacca where a few submarines can stop your ships. That's the main reason. But economically, if Chinese shipping in a substantial number is diverted, and you know, when China says it's going to do it, it will be done. This is going to be done within a few years. What does that mean for our 150,000 jobs? How serious is this? How much mind space does it get amongst our citizens? How much do you uh, read about this? Jurong Island is our petrochemical hub. Malaysia has announced and is proceeding, as they are entitled to, a much larger hub here in Pengaran, which is going to do exactly what Jurong Island is going to do. Their land costs a few Malaysian cents per square feet. Ours is reclaimed land and therefore costs several tens of dollars. Our labor is, of course, far more expensive. $2,000 here, you can get someone for 1,000 ringgit in Malaysia. 1,300 ringgit, maybe 2,000 ringgit. I don't need to belabor the point, but you know, basically it's much cheaper, and whatever we can do, they can do. Malaysia announces new financial center, and they want to put in a more, more than a billion dollars. So sit back, I say to my audiences, there are only three ways in which a country makes money. One, you dig something from the ground and sell. One, you grow something on the ground and you sell. The third, you are the middleman. Somebody else digs it from the ground and you sell it for them. You provide legal, accounting, financial services. We are the middleman in this region. But you know enough of the history to know how much our neighbors want us to make money off them. I mean, if you were there, you would say, why am I not making this money myself? And that's what's happening. Rightly so, because they are entitled to. So don't mistake. I mean, a lot of reasons why we have succeeded is because we have always thought ahead. We have put in place systems. But don't assume that others cannot do that and others cannot compete with you. Business Times yesterday said lawyers start on $7,000. But there's, in Bangalore, sit firms with 500 lawyers, 400 lawyers. Today I go to a law firm in Singapore. I want to reduce my costs. What is there to prevent me from saying, I want the opinion to be done out of Bangalore? You just supervise it. Online. Radiology, actual examples. You take the x-ray in Singapore. In Singapore, a radiologist is an MBBS, and then a specialist, I think. You pay, you know, six-figure salaries. You take the x-ray today, email it to India or China. The guy comes back with an analysis, assessment on what's wrong with your bones. You're not going to pay him what you pay in Singapore. So what... Just ask yourself, the young people here, what do you think you can do which cannot be done faster, better, cheaper, somewhere else? At the same time, opportunities. You know, this is our situation today. In population size, that is our bubble. In economic size, that's our bubble. The third largest economy 